Good afternoon uh, to all participants in the online public hearing organized by the Independent Evaluation Commission for assessing the integrity of candidates for the position of member in the self-administration bodies of judges and prosecutors pursuant to law number 26 stroke 2022. I hereby declare this session open. This hearing involves the resumed evaluation of Mr. Yom Kiptoka, candidate for the Superior Council of Magistracy and lecturer at the National Institute of Justice. I would like to welcome you, Mr. Kiptoka. Okay. Hello, everyone. It's good okay. to see you again. Thank you very much indeed. We are here to conduct an online public hearing in the context of the resumed evaluation process aimed at assessing candidates for the position of the Superior Council of Magistracy. The Commission is acting in accordance with law number 26 stroke 2022 and its rules of procedure. And on the screen in front of you, you have the five members of the Commission, Victoria Henley, Nadezhda Ryczewski, Tatiana Raducanu, no, not to Soria and myself, I'm often able to chair of the commission. The commission is also assisted by members of the secretariats and the online public hearing can also be followed by representatives of the media and the public. During the hearing, interpretation between Romanian and English will be provided. To allow for accurate interpretation, I would kindly ask you to speak clearly and slowly. Furthermore, the proceedings are being recorded and the public parts will be available online, generally within 24 hours after the hearing via the website of the Commission www.fetting.md. I will start with a brief overview of the procedural background of this resumed evaluation. On 20 January 2023, the Commission issued a decision in relation to your integrity evaluation for the position of member in the Superior Council of Magistracy. In its decision, the Commission decided that it had serious doubts about your compliance with the criterion of financial and or ethical integrity in relation to the failure to disclose a bank account and transfers from your parents in a manner described by law. On 10 February 2023, you appealed this decision to the Supreme Court of Justice and on 1 August 2023, the Supreme Court of Justice annulled the Commission's decision and ordered a re-evaluation. On 8 September 2023, the Commission started a re the resumed evaluation. And on 9 February of this year, 2024, pursuant to Article 19, Paragraph 1C of its Rules of Procedure, the Commission sent you a statement of facts and serious doubts. On 16 February, you responded in writing to the statement of facts and serious doubts. And on that day, you also informed the Commission that you wished to participate in a public hearing. You also requested the Commission, pursuant to Article 19, Paragraph 1E of the Rules of Procedure, to hear your parents to address the issue about which the Commission has indicated it has serious doubts. The Commission has accepted to hear your parents and you have identified the issues about which your parents were proposed to testify. The Commission will hear your parents one by one later during this public hearing. During this hearing, the Commission will take into account your privacy and where required and possible the privacy of your family members and close persons. So, so we, we will leave, leave out necessary, necessary details, details relating to, for example, ID <clears throat> numbers, bank account numbers, addresses of real estate, and the like. For the protection of your own privacy, we ask you to do the same. The present hearing takes place at your request. The hearing will be focused on the statement of facts and serious doubts that the Commission has sent to you and your written response to these statements of facts. I will briefly explain the procedure for today's hearing. For the issue included in the statement of facts and serious doubts, you will be given, if you so wish, a maximum of 50 minutes, 1, 5, 15, to briefly provide additional explanations to complement your written response to the statement of facts and serious doubts that you submitted to the commission. One or more members of the commission may have questions for you about the explanations you have provided, 
both in writing and in response to what you submitted during the hearing. I urge you to be concise in your explanations and answers. I also urge you to answer all questions truthfully and completely. Your explanations are important to the Commission in verifying your financial and ethical integrity. I will myself lead the discussion with you on the statements of facts and serious doubts. In relation to that, I would like to submit the following. On 9 February 2024, the Commission, as I said before, sent you a statement of facts and serious doubts in relation to one particular issue, the failure to disclose a bank account and transfer from your parents in the manner prescribed by law and sources of funds for such transfers. On 16 February 2024, the Commission received your response to the statement of facts and serious doubts and the Commission has taken note of your responses. The serious doubts in relation to this issue reads as follows, and I quote, the Commission considers that there are serious doubts as to the sources of funds of the candidate's parents during the period between 2012 and 2015 to transfer considerable amounts of money to the candidate's bank account and to a deposit and to deposit money in a deposit account held by the candidate's father, which exceed the total amount of official and unofficial income of the candidate's parents, which doubts have not been vindicated by the candidate. In addition, serious doubts exist in relation to the non-declaration of the bank account by the candidate and conflicting explanations for the non-declaration where this bank account involved considerable activity. Between 2012 and 2015, a total of 27 transfers were made to the account. Seven in 2012, eight in 2013 and 14, and four in 2015. The total amount of funds received each year was also substantial." End of quote. If you so wish, please briefly provide additional explanations up to about 50 minutes, as I mentioned before, to complement your written response to the statement of facts and serious doubts that you submitted to the Commission. After your explanations, the Commission may have a number of additional questions to you. Therefore, Ms. Ketuaga, you have the floor now for the next 15 minutes maximally. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. I will try to fit in these 15 minutes. Otherwise, if, I, if it takes more, like one or two minutes longer, I will kind of ask you to accept that. But I will try to fit in 15 minutes. We've, well, I start. Uh, that there were contradictory or conflicting explanations. But first, I would like to ask about the answer to the no no statement of facts. I just want to check if all the members that are not national uh, have it translated, because the materials I received on uh, 7th of March, and that's around 2,000 pages for binders, I did not find the text of my explanations translated to English. So I just wanted to clarify that, to ask about that. Secondly, indeed, in the third round of explanations that took place on November 18th, 2022, question two, Sorry, question one. Sub-question B. I said that at the time of filing declarations, there was zero on the account. If you take a look, the account that ends is 691. That's a current account. So that I mentioned it about it, and the fact that in the current account in 2014, it included zero lay, that is confirmed by the information that the commission, Privating Commission received from the 
president of Moldova Groin Bank, Bank, I will not say state the name uh, of that person, but you have that in writing, who provided you information about the account that end in, ends in 691 which confirms that on 21st of January 2013, it uh, included 41 euro cents. In 2016, on 29th of February, the balance was zero. And on 3rd of February 2014, there were 1,800 euros. According to my income declaration 2014 for year 2013, I filed it on February the 3rd. As I said during the previous public hearing that took place in the autumn of 2022, I communicated with a person working at the bank. I was on, I was calling that lady at the bank because she uh, provided me services starting in 2008. So if you look at the account ending in 691, according to the information I provided, uh, we have the commission on 8 August 2022, uh, and that was the statement of the bank account, nine pages long, that the bank issued to me, this statement. The bank did not uh, issue any other information to me. And talking to that lady, unfortunately, that lady who was, who was providing services to me starting in 2008, deceased. So this uh, I could communicate to the privity commission members. She died of an incurable disease. You could check that if it is necessary. So when I provided those explanations and when I received the doubts, I went to the bank office and another lady told me that uh, never on the day when the money gets paid, on the second or third day, the bank of the bank officer is that the amount came in. So on February the 3rd, 2014, that amount 1,800 euros that was transferred by my mother from Italy, and I attached the proof of sending uh, from the Carizo Bank in Italy. So it was not, the, the lady told she does not see anything in the account. And for that reason, I did not declare that. These facts can be uh, verified by the commission, by the secretariat, if you have a banking specialist, a that person could do that. Secondly, non-disclosure of the account. I would like to tell you very honestly, you know that yesterday I submitted the request getting familiar with this almost 2,000 pages of case files. I offered to take a polygraph uh, test inviting a professional in order to combat the false information that some state authorities reported in relation to me personally and my uh, family, and I mean the intelligence service, and I mean the anti-corruption center. I said, and today in the morning I was told by means of an email that uh, this is declined, that it, uh, that the uh, it is not possible for the Commission to do that. And I told you in my previous explanations that indeed 2012 to 2014, I did not know. And I explained like on these 11 pages, I explained everything. First of all, the previous law on the integrity authority did not include the mother and father as a family member. And it wasn't a uniform practice across the country, what to declare and what not. In essence, I have never been the owner uh, of the money that the mother and the father were sending to my account. It was opened when I was a student in 2008, and that continued over time. Why on my name uh, was that bank account uh, open? Because I was the only representative of a family in the country. Another important aspect, actually, I admitted that I did not know the legislation, not before the Privating Commission in the autumn of last year when you heard me in December. I admitted 
that I did not know the law, the meaning of the law, because there was a lack of uniformity. I mean, judges, the Supreme Court uh, were making mistakes too. Judges that were in office, like high dignitaries. I, at that time, but for society to know, I was not a judge. I was assistant at the uh, police academy. That is the lowest university teacher, like t professor's assistant, we call it. And I recognized I did not have the uh, legal skills that I have today, or the legal skills that are demanded today of a prosecutor or a judge. But despite that, in 2015, one year before I became a judge, even more than one year, when I got informed about this problem, I became aware and I want to highlight that. I was not constrained, no one intervened, but I was reading the legislation and I understood the mistake that I made in the years before that. This fact happened before I was a judge, more than a year before I became a judge, before I was heard the commission. I admitted that mistake, that omission, and I explained it very clearly uh, in uh, the explanations I provided on February 16th this year. First of all, I did not know the legislation. Secondly, the notion of family member in the NIA law that was enforced before 2016, parents, mother, father, were not falling under the definition of uh, family member. It was only a spouse and children. These circumstances determined make, make mistakes that I made much earlier than I became a judge. And I said that in the explanation, actually, with commission members, um, how, in what circumstances did I uh, make this omission? Was it because of me or because my parents left the country much earlier um, when I was a student, 2007, 2009, when I was still a student? They left because it was difficult to have a living here. And since I was the only one in the country, there was no one they could uh, send that to. But before I became a dignitary, before I became a judge, I realized that meaning of that law. And similar mistakes were made by people who had much higher positions. And I explained that in the ex explanations of uh, 16th of February of this year, because I cannot give the names of those specific people that I mentioned. But moreover, in three cases, similar to mine, with comparable amounts, they passed three vetting in three cases. Decision number 11, decision number 25, and 41. And what I asked in the explanations provided on 16 February, I asked for a similar treatment. But I understand why there is reluctance of commission members towards my personality. I understand very well this reluctance comes from. It happened even though in decision number 19, failing me, you did not make reference to the information received from the Intelligence and Security Service and from the National Anti-Corruption Service. But the information that was provided to you was done so in order to create among commission members, especially for the international ones, to create a negative impression of me, even though you did not mention that, uh, uh, that in the decision that you received information from intelligence service and from NAC, which was obviously false, and I made the necessary requests or notifications to the um, competent state authorities about that. So that information that you was in, we were in touch with, I did not have the possibility to contradict it in the last hearing, and that gave you uh, an impression of my myself as a person. But this is proved by uh, several circumstances. And also yesterday, I uh, submitted to the Distinguished Commission a, request, a video link of 26 of January 2022, when Reza Samate is uh, the president of a 
Parliamentary Commission for Legal Affairs, uh, you saw very well, if you saw the Lingua International members very well, only two judges. I was one of the two judges that I was there and I supported the need to pass the free vetting law. And what happens then? The force, former president of the uh, SCM, Mr. Doriel Mustace, writes a letter, ex officio, not at the request, I, I highlight, not at the request of the Commission, on May 27, 2022, uh, at his uh, um, proprio motto, he sends a letter about some uh, gross insinuations and false information. So he anticipates the letter from NAC um, and uh, intelligence service from June 2022. And I kindly ask the honorable members of the commission to pay attention to these facts, which were submitted and they were of such a nature as to damage my image in relation to you. And going back to that discussion of 26 January 2022 in the Parliament, I draw the attention to the risks that exist and the risks that exist in relation to the Commission, that certain state authorities, being in times of captive state, they may mislead deliberately the Commission in order to decrease the credibility of the vetting process. I mentioned that it wasn't just uh, some chit chat. I did not said, say that in private discussions. I stated that in public discussions in the Parliament of the Republic of Moldova, the Supreme Forum of the country, because I knew about the intention of the SEM management to denigrate me. Moreover, I believe that these letters were sent to the president's office as well. And in November 2022, I uh, did not pass the decree. And that's how the disenamination started, because on November the 8th, uh, 2022, candidate to SEM, uh, Ivan Kirtako was not approved as a judge until retirement age. So this information you received from NAC and the intelligence service, and that's what our intuition, intuition is. And the information from the president's office made you decide that. So going back to the account, when I realized that I have to mention everything, and I also explained to you in the uh, explanation of February 16th, I gave you examples from the old law on NIA that was actually, I corrected myself without, uh, without any specific context. It was just natural. Uh, if you think that because of the mistake that I made, and you already have the information, I saw you saw that all the money came from Italy exclusively sent by my father. And that omission I made happened before I became a judge. If you believe that this is of such an extent to affect uh, my reputation uh, as a judge, because I can't be an SEM member. And by the way, I um, one, I think there were two altogether judges who failed the pre vetting and recognized the legality uh, of, of the elections of 20th, the elections of uh, 20th of April 2023. Because after that election, I was contacted by several media outlets uh, to ask me. Even after August 1st, when I uh, won in the Supreme Court, the Zero de Garda contacted me, anti corruption attorney contacted, contacted me to ask about my opinion. And I stated that very clearly it's uh, out in the public. Our colleagues, uh, the judges, um, chose their representatives uh, in April 2023, and those elected people have uh, to fulfill the mandate as provided by the law, because my purpose was not to uh, get into the SCM, and uh, my statement Mr. proved Mr. that it was I, important for me. Mr. Kitaka, can I briefly interrupt you? You have now uh, used 50 minutes. I would suggest that you wrap up in one minute what you still would like to raise with the Commission. And after that, we will start with our uh, hearing further or continue our hearing. Thank you for um, wrapping up in, in one minute from now. So I was, I expressed my interest to pass a polygraph test so that 
everything that I communicated to the Commission is true. And I wanted to prove that what the Intelligence and Security Service communicated to the Commission and what the NAP told the Commission. And on this, in this way, I would like to congratulate uh, the management of uh, these uh, institutions uh, and ask them to check their uh, employees because they uh, provide false information. But these institutions are essential for the state. And once more, I got engaged in this process, being anchored in the idea that we can. We, uh, in the Republic of Moldova, we can build the rule of law. And this is not just a statement. My entire activity, 14 years as a teacher and all other things that I did, Ever since, for me, most seriously, I really fought a long time to give up to vetting and pre-vetting, and I generally don't know if I want to work as a judge or maybe I will be dismissed, but that's why I also invited my parents, because there are hundreds of thousands of Moldovans in the situation of my family, and the representatives of the pre-vetting commission cannot ignore that. Moreover, you know, if, if I were to be in a country as an expert in the Netherlands or in Georgia, and from the Dutch intelligence service or the Georgian intelligence service, I would have received compromising information. I would have tried and probably you are in the same situation because that was deliberate, uh, falsely provided that information. Why, one thing about the apartment, why there were no doubts left. 30 seconds, please, I promise. Mr. Ketchoka, we have clearly laid out the rules for the hearing today. We have given you 15 minutes. Um, those 50 minutes have been used by you and more than 50 minutes. You raise a few questions. I will answer them uh, about the process and then we will continue with our hearing. Um, first, in relation to your request as to where the documents have been translated, I can assure you that the your responses to the statement of facts, of course, have been translated for the use of the uh, all the members of the commission. This is crucial information. Uh, the commission is uh, working under its um, evaluation rules and its internal rules of procedure, and according to uh, what is it, rules of procedure, Article Four about languages. Um, it clearly says that the Secretariat shall ensure that all communication with the candidate is translated into English, and that, has, of course, has also been done in your case. Uh, it also says that upon the request of a member, the Secretariat shall ensure the translation into English in writing or orally of any materials received by the Commission. And as far as the Commission considered that necessary, we have certainly uh, done so. Um, in relation to the, your request for the polygraph, um, let me emphasize that it is not about the question of, of whether or not such a polygraph is possible or not possible, but that we, as we informed you this morning, we did not see a need for such a polygraph because of the fact that the information that we received from many public institutions, including the institutions that you mentioned, um, we have taken in that into account as far as we considered it necessary. Um, as you know, our decisions, it, the initial evaluation decision, and of course also our decision after the hearing today, will be recent and all arguments that we consider relevant will be included in that. As you may have seen in the initial evaluation decision, uh, none of the issues that you re raised in relation to those particular uh, public institutions have been included in our deliberations and they have not played a role at that time and do not play a role today. Um, as we informed you this morning, the scope of the resumed evaluation is focused on those issues that are uh, reflected in the serious doubts document and, and none of the issues that you mentioned are even close to what has been uh, included in the um, a, a statement of facts um, and therefore there is uh, from the perspective of the commission no need to uh, look into this uh, matter. Um, I think that is what I wanted to say in response to your um, um, procedural questions. Um, I would therefore now suggest that we continue with a couple of questions that uh, that the Commission has for you. 
Um, and I will start. And of course, if other members of the commission would like to go, uh, would like to pursue later on, they can, of course, jump in as well. My first question to you is the following. Um, during the initial evaluation, you informed the commission that in the period 2012 to 2015, you did not declare a euro bank account in your name on which your parents made transfers in the total amount of 74,660 euros while working abroad. You also briefly referred to that issue yourself in your introductory comment. You informed the Commission during the initial evaluation that one of the reasons you did not declare this bank account was that you had never been a, as it called, a de facto owner of these funds. During the initial evaluation hearing, however, given the fact that the bank account was in your name, you admitted that you had been obliged to declare this bank account. In response to the statement of facts that the Commission submitted to you during the resumed evaluation, you declared again that you considered yourself only a quote-unquote trustee and not the beneficial owner of the funds. And as I mentioned, you also touched upon that in your introductory comments. My questions to you are the following. Can you confirm that you were the official owner of this bank account? In the context that the bank account was in my name, obviously, yes. Okay, thank you. Then my second question is, can you confirm that you were required to declare this bank account during the years 2012-2015? made the declaration in 2015 for 2014, and I started to declare that that's the moment when I realized that I had to do that. So I understood that in 2015, that I should have included them for years 2014 and 2013, even though it was zero balance, because commissions um, questions uh, in, the third round of, uh, in the third round were about the current account, but that uh, the current account had zero balance is proved by the information that uh, I provided to the commission on 7th of March about the current account and also in the written explanations because uh, in the written explanations I gave answers to all of these questions. I mentioned that that before preventing, I did not make any difference between current account, bank account, and banking card that was mentioned in the explanation. And in the explanation to the statement of fact, I asked for nothing else than to be treated equally, similarly to other colleagues who passed preventing. Okay, thank you. My and third. the fact uh, that there was an internal practice for us. I presented, I submitted you a case in 2014, someone who had a much higher position than I did. Dignitary also admitted that, and then the NIA accepted. And the third aspect, um, the notion of a family member did not include parents uh, as family member. I mean the NIA law before 2016. Um, and uh, taking into account that our national legislation did not regulate legally the money sent by parents from abroad by bus or by bank as my parents did i put as a of myself as a temporary uh, depositor uh, our country did not make legal provisions clearly how can our citizens who migrated abroad how could they send money legally at home and the only option uh, of my parents or well, only solution that they saw is to send money by bank because, because in this way the money could be uh, in the eyes of uh, italian state and moldovan state because 70 percent of moldovan citizens still send and money in they are uh, Postal persons and uh, some people say that the remittances from abroad are almost two billion US dollars per year to Moldova. So our politicians accept this, but still they have not created a legal framework at that time. And I have mentioned. I did not have the legal skills at that time of a level of a prosecutor or something, because I was just a teacher's assistant, and when I understood it, 
in the declaration that I submitted in 2015, four year 2014. And well, more than one year later after that, I became a judge. So I realized that mistake before I became a judge. So before that, uh, and the doubt that you invoke is due to the social conditions of Moldova in the 2000s, that determined uh, massive uh, emigration of citizens from Moldova, like according to the National Bureau of Statistics, almost one million of people have left. And the state should have uh, had the obligation to create a legal mechanism to for citizens to send money home. Could you please respond to the question that I have um, and also limit it to the questions that I have? So my third question in relation to this issue is, uh, what, legal, what legal difference does it make for your annual declaration obligations to declare bank accounts whether you consider yourself a trustee or not the beneficial owner of these funds? And what law or directive is that based upon to make such a distinction? Please go ahead. Do you mean regarding 2012, 2014, during that period of time? Just to be clear, are we talking about that period of time? I'm, I'm talking about the bank account on which you received during the years 2012 to 2015 transfers from money from your parents while working and, and living yeah. abroad. And whether you, uh, regardless of whether you consider yourself to be the trustee or the owner of that bank account, whether the same legal obligation uh, applies um, in relation to the obligation to report such bank accounts. That is my question. I would like to reiterate something that I already said. When I realized what the purpose of the law was back then, because it is not in vain that over the years a lot of amendments have happened to, to the laws regarding declarations. So currently, I certainly, I mean, in 2015, when I submitted the declaration, I've also indicated that. And actually, at the time, I realized what the emission was. And I said that that emission was something that was how should I put it? It was something that was that was happening and starting 2015, 2016, I've already been declaring everything. And uh, proof of that is the fact that the commission didn't find any issues with the other years and never before. And it has never happened for Nia to raise any issue about my declaration. So even a long time before I became a judge, I realized what was supposed to be done. But I personally, as I've already explained for a number of times already, and I will continue to reiterate that my parents have been sending money to me and I was just there well first of all they were sending the money because they were afraid to keep the money there in Italy so it was also a matter of security and as a family we agreed that that was the way I mean the money was going there since 2008 and in 2008 I was a student I graduated in 2010 but I anyway continued my education all the way to 2016 okay so um, the law at the time just to go back to this just to add a couple of lines I mean, I was wondering, I don't, I'm not the owner of the money. So what is the document supporting this money? As in, that was not a donation specifically. That was not money that was loaned to me, what was lent to me. And then in 2015, the parents, my parents came back and they bought an apartment. And there was also some expenses covering uh, the tuition costs, or the, the education of my brother and some other maintenance costs related to, to, to the house where we grew up. So that's what the money was being used for. Okay, but but the bank account was in your name and you are the owner of the bank account and you had the obligation oh. to declare. That is correct, isn't it? Did you... I said, yes, I said that I've realized this back in 2015, that I was supposed to have declared it. And that's why I declared in 2015, that is the explanation. But in the meantime, I mean, the, there were 20, 20, from 2012 to 2015, there were some amendments to the law on uh, declarations to the NIA. As for the current account, I really thought there was no difference. I mean, I didn't see it. It couldn't differentiate a deposit account from a bank account, or, or like a bank card, a current account. There was a question in the third round regarding that account with 691 at the end there was a zero and that's a current account and on the 3rd of february regarding the 1800 euros the banker was not the possible the banker um the bank clerk didn't have the possibility to actually see that at that moment in time to be able to communicate that to us i mean that's what i was explained but we can invite a specialist if the money um is sent to an account on a particular date it takes about two or three days for you to get there and for you to actually see it 
Okay, thank you. Can you please Can show them in sunt, your in your own? Și aici poți fi uh, testat la poligraf. I could I would actually be ready even to sit a polygraph test even regarding questions around this issue. I am completely honest in my statements. Can you please just point it and I had nothing to hide. I, I I you have given your answer to the commission. Can you please in further answers to the to the commission slow down a bit because I can really see that the interpreters are struggling with providing the interpretation and only for the quality of the interpretation it would be useful if you can slow down a bit in the speed of your answers. Coming to the second question now, um, th that is the following. During the initial evaluation, you also mentioned that you did not declare this bank account in the period 2012 to 2015, because each year at the time you had to submit your annual declaration, there were no funds in the bank account. In your 2014 annual declaration, you declared a deposit of th over 30,000 euros. During the resumed evaluation, you were asked what the source of funds was for this deposit of over 30,000 euros. And you declared that the source was, quote, income earned exclusively by my parents over 2013, 2014. In 2013, as we have uh, established, your parents transferred the amount of 22,168 euros to your bank account. In 2014, your parents transferred an amount of 20,084 euros to your bank account. You explained that in addition to the 20,084 euros transferred in 2014, there was a leftover amount from 2013 of about 10,000 euros. On 3 February 2014, the day you submitted your annual declaration, there was 1,800 euros in your bank account that was transferred into that account on that very same day. And you already explained that in your introduction. Your explanations provided during the initial evaluation that at the time of the submission of your annual declaration, there had been no funds in the bank account seemed to contradict your explanation during the resumed evaluation that there was a leftover amount from 2013 into 2014 of about 10,000 euros. Here come my questions, and I would appreciate if you could briefly answer your, these questions. The first question is, please confirm that during the initial evaluation, you indicated that in the period 2012 to 2015, each year at the time of the submission of your annual declarations, there were no funds in the bank account to be declared. Can you confirm that? Confirm faptul. I confirm that on the current account, the answer is 691, 691, that is a current account, like a checking account. So at the time when I was submitting the declarations, there was nothing there in 2013 on the deposit account, which is a different account. There was no funds on that account. And I admitted to that, I recognized that fact, and I explained in writing, writing, um, in writing, I explained that I was not differentiating anything between current account and uh, the other types of accounts. And I think there might have been when I called her in 2016, maybe I was misled in, in figuring out the accounts. But then I realized about the, the why the situation of the accounts are. And I admit to my fault in not distinguishing between the different types of accounts. But what I would like to attract the attention of the commission to, to direct the attention of the commission to, is that in the first evaluation, the question was about account 691. And 691 was because the bank was reporting to me only about the current account. When I went to the bank asking about the accounts, They've only provided to me information about that. They've only told me about the situation of the, the account that ends in 691. And give me a second, please. Uh, so this account, 691, this, what was going in there, there's a, there's a bank statement. There's an, over here, this is something that was sent to you, to the to the commission from Moldova Agro and Bank, and that was shared with me. Then in 2013, no funds, 2014. 
In 2014, there were 1,800 on the third, which coincides with the date on which the declaration was submitted. But as for the deposit account, I said that I didn't know I admitted to my mistake. And that's why I mentioned that I didn't, it was my fault for not asking more, for not showing more diligence, for not being more diligent. But I just didn't know how to act in a diligent way because I did not act or behave in um, a way that the owner of the money would. And you can ask questions about this to my parents because indeed, that was not my money, that was the money of my parents. But you can see from the bank statements, from all of that information, you can see that the money came all the way from Italy. Yeah, thank you very much. That brings me to my second... In 2014, I haven't... My... Mr. Kichoka, that brings me to my second question. Can you please confirm that during the resumed evaluation, you indicated that at the beginning of 2014, there was a leftover amount from 2013 of about 10,000 euros? Can you confirm that? <clears throat> Look, I don't have the uh, bank data right here. The bank didn't give that to me. But as far as I can remember, given that in 2015, I declared, I submitted the declaration, and I think approximately that was the amount back then. Okay. Because but, but I, can't, might... I can't be very, I can't be very precise now in my answers because the bank didn't provide an answer to me regarding that. I was given just the bank statement, and they said that they don't have any any other information on the record. So if you remember when I filled in the income declaration. That's what I submitted, and what I submitted at the time was everything that I had. I have nothing else, and I just said it was my mission in the past that I have done things with enough due diligence. But now, if we look at how much was withdrawn, we can see that money was being withdrawn, and some money was left on the account. And in 2014, when I submitted the 2013 declaration, certainly there was some money on that account. I think maybe around 10,000 or maybe 11,000, but that is an approximate amount. I cannot be very precise about it. I mean, as far as I can remember, I mean, I just as, just like I didn't remember that, for instance, with the SEM, I submitted a, a bank, st a statement, actually, a statement that I had a one-room apartment and I, for I forgot about it. And only now I was submitted that information by the commission and it, I remembered certain things that I had genuinely forgotten. We are not talking about the apartment. We're talking about this bank account. And as I explained in my question, you uh, at the initial evaluation, you said there was no money in the bank account. That was the bank account that was used by your parents yeah. to transfer money into the bank account. Let me finish off my question, please. So you, in your no. initial evaluation, you said there was no, no money no, in the bank yes. account. I would like... like was, was that, apologies. Mr. Kitoka, if you, you have the opportunity to respond to the questions I have, but let me first finish off the question so then you can know which answer you can provide to that. So what I'm saying is, and that was my question, in the initial, during the initial evaluation, you informed the commission that in the bank account that was used by your mother to transfer money from the country where she was living and working, that at the moment you submitted your annual declaration, there was no money in that bank account. Mm -hmm. Then during the resumed evaluation, yeah. when we asked where the 30,000 deposits suddenly came from, you said, there was money from my parents, but there was about 10,000 left over. So at one stage, you say there is no money yeah. left. At the other stage, you say there was 10,000 left over from the previous year. Now, my question to you is, which of those two two statements is the correct one and which is not the correct one? And then also, where did that money come from if it wasn't from that bank account? Please go ahead, Mr. Kitoka. Speaking of the current account, the one that in 2014, and on that day, there was zero. On it. Uh, just give me a second. I just asked the interpreter, asked the speaker to be a little bit, bit slower speaking about digits and figures. So the current account that the mother was sending funds to from Italy. When I submitted the declarations for 2012, 2014, the balance was zero. In 2014, when I filed my 2013 declaration, it was a coincidence that on the day when I filed the declaration, 
1,800 euro was transferred from Italy. The bank clerk told me there was nothing there. They didn't manage to, to see it. So I learned about it post factum. However, and also thinking of the fir questions, first questions, the first moment of the questions. Those questions were about the account 691, not about the deposit account. So until the resumed evaluation, until the and until the, the resumed evaluation, before that, I have never received questions about the deposit account. So when I was, I had to make the distinction between that current account and the deposit money, I realized that the deposit account and the current account were different accounts. And in 2014, it was my omission to misdeclare when I when I filed the 2013 declaration. But that omission, that fault, I mean, that was due to a number of factors. I was not knowledgeable enough about the legal provisions, the fact that the money was not mine specifically and there was no very clear regulation and I explained my situation. But in 2015, I've addressed this issue as well and I reported that our other account too. So that's where all the uncertainties stem from. But I had no intention whatsoever. I mean, the questions were, were overlapping. Regarding the deposit, the deposit account, the question only appeared, appeared in February this year. And when the questions were asked in the very first part of my evaluation when I didn't pass the evaluation. So at that time, the questions were regarding my current account. And that information, you can also see it here, the one that I have here, the, the balance was zero. Now the question regarding the deposit and those accumulation, the deposit, the questions about the deposit came up in February 2024. And at that time, in my explanations too, I realized at that time that there was a difference between these different types of accounts. One can have the deposit account, the current account, a uh, bank card account. And obviously, when I was reporting for 2013, then perhaps I can't tell you specifically how much money was there, but I improved or I I got things right already in 2015 when I was filing my declaration for 2014, but it's only in 2015 that I realized my mistakes, so to speak. But I did not hide anything away from the commission. And that's why I kept highlighting the account that ends in 691 in the third round of questions in the initial evaluation in November 2022, when a question was, was raised about it. My answers were specifically about the current account and not for the deposit account. And so that's why it was, I did not differentiate. And that's why I uh, looked forward to this hearing today and for my parents being here as well, because the money that was coming in from 2013 to 2014, as far as I can remember, was not maybe that much. I've now talked to my parents as well. So in 2014, there was less money. But then when in 2015, I filed the declaration, that was that amount that was a little bit more than 30,000. And yes. that is the amount that I did declare. Okay, thank you. But my my question is: so, in, if 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 there were different accounts, and uh, then the the question that I have then as the last question on this particular issue is: so you had a deposit account on which apparently you had a deposit of thirty five thousand euros. So of course the obvious question from the commission is: where did that money come from? From how we understood your answers at previous stage, that is all money coming from your parents. Is that correct? Is that a correct understanding? Absolutely. Confirm. Okay. Confirm. That is absolutely correct. I confirm what you said. All the money on the deposit account, all that money belongs came exclusively from Italy through the current account transferred to the deposit account. Okay. And this can be seen. You can look at the uh, account activity. I'm not quite a this specialist in accounting, but I see that you. I can see that you can that all those uh, statements. You can see how much money went to the current account from Italy and where that money went to from there. But it's now that I saw this documentation, what I showed you, what I shared with you is what the bank shared with me at some point and that I, I shared that information with you out of my own initiative. And when the questions appeared in February, uh, I and my family, we sat down and thought about it and that's how we tried to connect the dots. And that's what just what I want to convey to you is that I had no interest whatsoever to hide anything away and to confirm again that this is the money of my parents that they earned okay. in Italy. They were transferred to the current account and then a part of it would go to the deposit account because we wouldn't use everything to cover our expenses. Okay, thank you very much. Then let's move on to the next question that I have for you. So 
The next question is the following. During the initial evaluation, it appeared to the Commission that the total amount of money transferred from your parents in your bank account in the period 2012 to 2015 was 74,660 euros, whereas the total amount of declared income of your parents over that same period according to information that you provided to the Commission, was 64,127 euros. It was before the Supreme Court of Justice for the first time that you presented new information in the form of two statements from individuals from the country where your parents live and work, which then seek to demonstrate that your father also had an unofficial income. In response to questions from the Commission during the resumed evaluation, you stated that this unofficial income over the years 2012 to 2014 amounted to about 17,500 euros. At the same time, however, the Commission also received information that demonstrated that in the period 2013-2015, your father also held a bank deposit account in the Republic of Moldova, in which he deposited a total of 16,614 euros. According to the statements of facts sent to you, the total amount of bank transfers by your parents to your account and the bank deposits in the bank account of your father exceed the total official and unofficial income of your parents by over 9,600 euros. It was in response to this statement of facts that you submitted now for the first time four additional declarations, one by your parents and three by other persons, which now seek to demonstrate that both your parents received, in addition to the sources of income already described before, also additional unofficial income of 450 euros and 600 euros per month. Now my questions are the following. Please confirm that during the initial evaluation you submitted information about the declared income of your parents, which demonstrated that in the period 2012 to 2015, that total income amounted to 64,127 euros whereas the amount of money transferred to your bank account was over 74,000 euros, so about 10,000 euros less than their declared income. Can you confirm that? Indeed, uh, well, I will say yes, but I would like to add an explanation. In 2012-2015, to the official amount declared that the 64,000, well, that is exclusively the income of the mother. So I would like to underscore that's the income of my mother. So if we look at the calendar 2012, 13, 14, 15, for four years, the declared income of my mother was 64,000 euros. In that period of time, my father wasn't earning less than my mother in that period of time. It's only that he was working in the informal sector. He was working informally. Mm -hmm. So the fact that that is the income of my mother alone, that is proved by these records from the authorities in Italy. Because the tax returns, so the, 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 they are on the name of my mother, and my father wouldn't file any tax returns whatsoever because he was working unofficially. There's been the hearing of the Supreme Court of Justice. I've, uh, I've read the decision of the Commission, and the Commission was referring that to a difference of 10,000 euros. Although the, the Commission, the representative of the Commission and the, and the Supreme Court of Justice, they did not negate, did not ne deny the fact that in that period of time, many citizens of Moldova was, were working abroad, and the Commission accepted that. There is no doubt as to the fact that my father was in Italy in that period of time. It's only that his income wasn't um, officially reported anywhere. But 
the income of my father is comparable to that of, of my mother, which is still the case. Back in 2016-17, when my father got employed officially, you can see that the uh, declared income of my mother for a year is 13, 14 thousand euros, and my father sometimes has uh, 15, 16, 17 thousand euros reported a year. I mean, it's easy to make the calculations. If we add the 64 thousand of my mother, then certainly my father's income wasn't less than that. I mean, the, the income earned by my father was comparable to the income legally earned by my mother. And that's why they had the possibility to send money home through the bank account. And if the Italian authorities saw anything suspicious about the transfers of my mother, because the tax authorities in Italy have a very keen eye, and, but Italy too, the Italian authorities would accept to the situation as it was. It was known that many foreigners were working unofficially there. And my father, as I also previously said, my father was not in a situation to impose any conditions whatsoever on his employers. And when the case was at the Supreme Court of Justice, I talked to my father and I said, look, one of the reasons why I caught this outcome is this 10,000 euros difference. And you see, this was a huge blow for my parents. They felt very bad because because this, uh, because of this, and there was the preferential price department, the 10,000 euro situation, and um, my father, who is to be heard today, I mean, they were ready to, they would have even filed a complaint against the, their employees, their Italian employees, but they were afraid to do it still. So there were, as for the citizens, uh, for, for the other people who filed those declarations, one of them went to the notary, another one was afraid of it. But anyway, but those um, employers, or those, they, they were afraid of having to pay now some certain taxes. And some other employees have passed away. I mean, things were happening back in 2012 and 2014, and a lot of time has passed. And in 2015 is the year when my father started working uh, both officially and unofficially, but he started to official work back in around 2015. But if we make some simple ca calculations, if you look at 2012, 2015, and we consider that my father's income was compatible to the income of my mother, then the amount is, uh, the total amount was much bigger than what was sent to Moldova. And the deposit account, there was 20,000 euros that was for a rainy day, so to speak. So much more was earned than was transferred to Moldova. Okay, thank I think you. They, they've earned you know. about 30,000 yeah. more. But then um, my my follow-up question is then the following. Can you please confirm that not before the commission during the initial evaluation, but that only before the Supreme Court of Justice, you presented for the first time two declarations purporting to demonstrate additional unofficial income of your father, which would have allowed for the total amount of transfers into your bank account of 74,660 euros. And I think you also already largely responded to that question, isn't it? Well, I confirm what you said. Okay. And I reiterate that even at the first hearings that have taken place, even at the time I said that my father has been working unofficially. And proof of that is the fact that in the dec where you see the tax returns that those declarations, you can only see the name of my mother only for the 64,000 euros. So it's only my mother's. And um, the, the commission could ask the um, tens of thousands of citizens of Moldova about the situation and how things were back then. And, uh, there were also other citizens who made confirmations of uh, of how they my parents were working, and you've seen the declarations uh, uh, to support that. But the 10,000 euro situation now that leads me to think about my family, my parents, because the, the deposit account, the current account, they were also help because they told me to. I was just to, to help the, the, the situation, to support my family, uh, given the situation in Moldova, and we were in a very bad situation. Actually. When my, uh, I was in hospital when my parents had to go to Italy and about 60, 70 percent of the people who have my illness pass away. So think about how hard it was for my parents to even have to live. And now, given also the career that I have to to, to defend, that my father had to work unofficially in Italy, and the nature of the situation was confirmed by the government of Moldova, by the government of Italy as well. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Then Apologies my, for my... getting a little bit emotional. 
my third question then is that can you also confirm that in the period 2013 2015 so when your father uh, had an official unofficial income your father deposited a total amount of 16614 euros in a bank deposit account in the republic of moldova in his own name exactly yeah, okay. that is correct okay. and then um, and... my next question will be then can you please confirm that only in response to the statement of facts during this resumed evaluation you presented for the first time four additional declarations one by your parents and three by other individuals now purporting to demonstrate the existence of yet other additional unofficial income of both your mother and your father, which taken together would have allowed for the total amount of transfers into your bank account and the total amount of deposits in your father's bank account. Well, certainly. So when there were doubts, that's, that's what sparked discussions in our family. As I was saying, the Supreme Court of Justice, there were doubts, doubts around the 10,000 euros. And we provided pieces of evidence for about 17,000, I think I can't remember very well. But obviously, my father had several jobs, not only the one, and I also provided um, the statements from other citizens who made some, uh, who wanted to, to share information about it. So when the doubts were communicated, that's when we started looking into it more thoroughly. When I embarked on this um, endeavor, I didn't even think that there would be questions about whether Moldovan citizens have worked uh, illegally um, abroad or not, because this is something that was very widespread and known to, to everyone, that people were working unofficially. And now with the repeated doubts, I tried to do my best again, but, but then again, you will hear my parents later today and you will see what they look and feel like they try to do their best to, to give everything they take uh, that they can they could for their for their children and uh indeed this is their money they worked for it and uh, they worked for my well-being and for my education yeah okay thank you but then my, my next question on, on this issue is, can you please explain why you did not submit these six declarations, one from your parents, two from Moldovan nationals, and three from nationals of the country where your parents live and work during the initial evaluation when the commission asked you already at that time to provide explanations about the sources of income of your parents for the different bank transfers made to your bank account? The fact that there were doubts and the fact that the commission did not accept for my father, that my father had an income more or less equivalent to my mother's, I did not know about that until the statement of facts. Uh, the first part is the 10,000 uh, doubts, more or less, that was invoked by the commission in the decision because uh, both in the content of the decision and the representative uh, of a commission at the Court of Justice, Supreme Court of Justice, accepted that the uh, my father worked informally and had an income, and I did not know about the doubts in this respect. I want to draw your attention here that maybe you noticed when I filed the initial five-year declaration, I submitted all documents of my parents from Italy. When they worked, what period, legal or not, uh, abstracts from the tax authority. If I knew about these doubts, these specific ones, I would, of course, provide that from the very beginning, and maybe we wouldn't have reached the discussion of today. But really, I uh, did not know about these doubts, personally. I did not know. Okay. Thank you very much. Then my last question to you before we move over to hearing your uh, your parents one after the other is, do you have anything to add or clarify with respect to this matter? Please go ahead. Is it my last word now? Last no, 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 comment? no, no. This, the, 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 my, your, whether you have anything to add in relation to the particular questions that we raise with you now during this hearing. Everything that I would like to ask the distinguished commission members is to get into the essence of the explanations that I provided of the situation that my family was in, because it is similar to the situations of hundreds of thousands of families from Moldova. 
and not for a moment I had the intention to hide something from the commission. Maybe I was not um, attentive enough to certain aspects, but when I was uh, provided with the doubts in the decision and subsequently, subsequently um, together with my family, because this process of uh, great importance uh, to me and my family, probably it's the same to every candidate. And the fact that I had nothing to hide, not even the money that came from Italy, that was uh, proved by my actions in 2015, before I became a judge. And this commission that I made in 2012 to 2014, that I personally admitted in 2015 when I uh, filled out the declaration, is not uh, of such an extent as to affect the image of justice or of the judiciary. It is a natural thing that was in Moldova, and I was not a judge back then. This is what I want to say in my entire activity, not only as a judge. I always did my work honestly, and that is thanks to my parents, who uh, gave me an honest upbringing, and uh, they sacrificed their life uh, for me. After 27 years of working as a teacher, she moved abroad in order to, uh, for me to be able to have an honest life. So, but. Because of a letter from the Achille intelligence service, Oameni from uh, Doriel Mustiatze, from NAC, people that I don't know, uh, except for these letters, people that know me, they know that I'm an honest person. And uh, everything I want to ask you to be, but I understand that it is difficult for you because I realized the difficult, or how difficult the work of the commission was going to be. Uh, uh, so, I understood that it would be difficult, and I just want to ask you to pay attention to the fact that I never uh, intended to hide anything. If this is not my last comment, I, that's all. Uh, if it is the last, uh, well, I, there are still some other things that I would like to mention. Okay. Uh, th thank you very much for this. What we will do now is that we will um, take a one or two minute Dar break to um, have your... Uh, when will I have the last word of a closing comment? What the, the, I was about to explain the process uh, for the rest of the hearing. So what we will do now is have a brief interruption in order to set up uh, the place where first your mother and after that your father will um, be heard. Uh, once, uh, and I see that that is already work in progress, um, once uh, both parents have been heard based on questions from your side and maybe also from the commission, uh, then we will wrap up. And then, of course, you will be provided the opportunity to have a last word for the commission before we terminate the hearings for today. So we will first get started with setting up the uh, hearing for one of your parents, uh, of course, one parent at a time, and then the other parent. And then after that, we will uh, have the final word for you and the wrap up of the hearing. So let's wait until we have all technical arrangements in place. Good afternoon, Mr. Kitoka. Uh, Father Kitoka, can you hear me loud and clear? Yes, I can hear you well. Thank you. Okay, very good. Then, uh, good afternoon to you, Mr. Kitoka. Um, as you are aware, you are participating in the online public hearing organized by the Independent Evaluation Commission. Um, and uh, this hearing involves the resumed evaluation of Mr. Young Kitaka, candidate for the Superior Council of Magistracy and lecturer at the National Institute of Justice. Um, just for your information, in front of you on the screen, you will see the five members of the commission, um, and those five members are Victoria Henley, uh, Nadezhda Rebjevsky, and Tatiana Raducanu, Nona Tutoria and myself, Hermann von Hebel, the chair of the commission. The commission is also assisted by members of our secretariat, um, and the online public hearing can also be followed by representatives of the media and the public. 
during the hearing, interpretation between Romanian and English will be provided. And to allow for accurate interpretation, I would kindly ask you to speak clearly and slowly. Furthermore, the proceedings are being recorded and the public hearing, public parts will be available online within 24 hours after the hearing. As you are aware, the Commission issued a decision on 20 January last year in, in relation to the evaluation of your son, Mr. Yom Ketoka, for the position of member of the Superior Council of Magistracy. This decision was appealed to the Supreme Court of Justice and the Supreme Court of Justice on the 1st of August uh, annulled the Commission's decision and ordered a re-evaluation, which we have since started. On 16 February of this year, the candidate, uh, your son, informed the Commission that he wished to participate in a public hearing and also requested the Commission to invite you to testify before the Commission. When we will have questions to you, um, the Commission will take into account your privacy and where required and possible, the privacy of your family members and close persons. Um, the Commission has, before we have this hearing, also heard the candidate in relation to the issue for which you have also been invited to testify before the Commission. At the hearing, uh, as the hearing of you has been requested Sorry. by the candidate, I'm now first turning to Mr. Ketoka, the candidate, to ask you any questions he may have for you. Once uh, he has finished the questions put to you, the Commission will determine whether it will have any follow-up questions to you. Uh, Mr. Ketoka, candidate, I appeal to you to keep the, your questions short and to the point. And we also ask you, uh, Father Ketoka, that your answers be short and to the point as well. Um, we, of course, also ask you to answer all questions truthfully and completely, because your explanations are, of course, very important for the Commission in verifying the integrity of the uh, candidate. Mr. Kitaka, candidate, you have the floor now. Please proceed. Honestly, it's probably uh, this is the most difficult moment for me to ask questions to my father and my mother. Uh, I have three questions for you. Just keep your head high and go move on. In 2012 to 2015, have you been in Italy? Yes. Could you please, what place in Italy did you work? There are 20 regions. I worked in the south. Uh, well, I worked in Bologna, uh, Emilia Romagna region, province. Could you tell me what, uh, in, when did you go to Italy? 2009, 6 February at 6 o'clock in the morning, I was in the, at the bus station in uh, Bologna. Next question. In 2012 to 2014, on the average, your work, that you did. Could you tell me how much money did you earn per month? Around 1,000, more than 1,000. Sometimes it was 1,100, 1,200, depending on the period. And then uh, it depends on the month. We have like 30 days, 31 days, or some uh, months with uh, public holiday. So I never wrote down every month. Why was the mother sending money home? It was your mother because. We are a family. I am your father and she is your mother. And I was working uh, informally and officially and I gave my money to my wife. I'm not a Muslim, I am a Christian. So for us, Orthodox Christians is the wife who holds the money. It was the same for my father and for my grandfather and our wives don't leave us. I don't have questions to you. You can ask as many questions you want. I am telling the truth. But could you please say what at the Supreme Court of Justice, when my, when my case was heard by the Supreme Court of Justice, why in uh, those declarations 
corporations, they are owed those amount. I give you, it's true, it's like it true answers, like I can tell that a thousand times before the court, before any court in the world. I worked informally as a human Christian person. I uh, served in an army uh, abroad. My uh, father was a veteran of war and I will never throw a stone at a person who helped me out. I cannot declare, but I, I worked informally. The person hosted me in their house. They gave me a bread to eat. I cannot go and uh, report them that I worked. They did not beat me up. They just gave me a place to work and sleep. Thank you. Thank you, Father. You're welcome. I have no other questions. Maybe the commission okay. members. Thank you, Dad. Okay. Thank you very much. Then we will have a few questions. You are welcome. Okay. Uh, we have a few questions for you as well. Um, and I will read out... that for me. You may ask 1,000 questions. You're welcome. Okay. It will be much less than 1,000 questions. I can re reassure you that. Is it too But that's yeah. the right of a person to ask okay. questions. Okay, let's get started with a few questions that I have for you, Mr. Kitzmacher. Please, please do. Okay, so my question is, uh, listen carefully to the introduction, and then I have a few questions for you. So the question is as following. Last month, your son, uh, Jan Kirtaka, submitted four declarations to the commission. Uh, one was signed by you and your wife, and three others uh, declarations by um, yeah. people you know from Moldova and from, from Italy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then all three persons declare about the work that you and your wife had during the period 2010-2015. So that is about 9 to 14 years ago. Um, my first question to you is, can you tell us how you know each of these persons? What is your relationship to them and how long have you known them? Please go ahead, Mr. Uh, so I will tell you truthfully, I don't know uh, if you have been abroad like simple people or only as tourists, because it's not only me, but everyone, when the migration happened since the world exists. So we went there and, you know, on Earth, there are people with great souls, and thanks to such people, we managed to integrate slowly uh, to the extent possible. Not, not all people are bad. There are kind people with a big heart. So we managed to fit in, and thanks to them, today uh, we are integrated. The question was, how do you know those persons who gave the explanations? The Italians and the others. Well, those are Moldovans and those were Italians that I worked for. I met them, they called me to work, we got to know each other. You know, it takes time to go into their circle. No one will accept to you into your home if they don't know you. Like, someone needs you and someone recommends you and step by step we integrate it. Now we are friends, we work, we laugh, we we uh, respect each other. We're happy to see each other. Okay. My next question to you is the following. Um, <laughs> when, when did you last talk to each of those three persons? And, and did you talk to them in relation to the preparation of these declarations that have been submitted to us? Uh, yes, I was uh, spoon. I can tell you, I met one of them one month ago, but the, uh, with the others, we met when this question happened. We asked them, this is what happens, that's the reason. You can see it in the documents. Nothing to fear about, this is the truth. Okay. And then uh, my next question is, um, that all three persons um, that... Um, all three persons declare that in the case of your wife, she worked for 12 hours during uh, Saturdays and Sundays, 
uh, for an unofficial income yeah. of 150 euros per month and that you yourself work for 20 yeah. hours per week and received an unofficial income of 600 euros per month. Um, can you explain how they learned about these kind of specifics about the number of hours you worked and the amount of money that you received? How did they uh, uh, kind of detail? They were friends, family members, like uh, living in the same apartment. People are not all rich. You should understand that clearly. The person greets you and then they answer to your greeting. I accepted what they gave me. I did not do anything. Power, stop. This question is about the following. These people that provided declarations. How did they know about the money, amount of money? Because we were talking with people where I lived. Their relatives, they told us, but that family where I worked is dead. When I was registered as working, she is dead. So they were not financially able to have me uh, officially. That was the reason. Nothing bad, nothing was stolen. But these people that mentioned could, for instance, if the commission called them, would they answer? Maybe, uh, I know, people from social assistance were coming. I mean, they knew I was working there, but I did not go to the Vatican to go out and tell that these people are paying me 600 euros. But I went to the Vatican. This was just good attitude of people. Uh, people took me in and should I have reported them for that? No, I did not steal. Those people did not steal. It was just the economic and financial condition was such. And it's not the same for all people. Not so many uh, millionaires and billionaires in the world. Most people are poorer. And now he said something in Italian, so I can't translate. Okay. My my next question is the following: that um, the the declarations go into okay. the details about the number of hours, the amount of money uh, that you had as income da, well, yes. at work, uh, but but none da. of them actually explain the period of time during which um, you had such income. What time frame are we talking about? Which years or which period of time are we talking about? This was until I got an employment contract in 2014. After that, well, I was also sometimes going to them, you know, if a person is good to you, you have to be good to them. Um, but particularly it was until then, that was the hardest time. And then people gave me a hand in order not to drown. So... That was the reason. Then, slowly, I found uh, another job. But, you know, the situation there, well, there are two kind of laws in the world. There are written laws and unwritten laws and laws of nature. If a person says that I can't, I don't have a possibility. And, I mean, would you better stay in the street? They did not force me to go there and work there. I was not working under someone's pressure. I was free. No one apprehended me. No one held me at gunpoint. Like, if we, we will kill you if you don't work. No, the person was open. I can't pay you more. The, the, my financial condition doesn't work. So uh, that's why I accepted and I was grateful. And it's not only me. There are hundreds and thousands of people working like that. It's not that people don't want to be official or... Uh, but people, employers cannot financially afford there is a country with well, poor people, rich people, but poor people also have a right to leave. They also could need uh, someone to take care, a carer to, to, to pay for. And I'm here today, for instance, like we're neighbors, and someone calls in the evening, a relative, and says, come to my place necessarily. You have a grandfather, like, could you give some water, give some food to my old grandparents? And you will say, thank you, you will not just stop me. And why you accept me? Because you trust me. That's the meaning of life, to integrate. It's not about being rich 
or poor. If if I'm poor, that means that I'm bad. There are kind people that are poor. There are there are rich people that are kind. So uh, this is just a look. No one can say that I stole something or did something. It's just people with open, kind heart. It's not that I don't want to give. I cannot afford my pension. My salary doesn't afford because in that country we also have problems. We have a notion of communism and heaven, but none of it is on earth yet. Okay, Father, please try to just answer the questions that you are asked. Yeah, th thank you very much. My my last question to you is that um, okay. in in one of the declarations okay. that was submitted, um, the person indicated that she would replace uh, your wife' uh, work when she was on holidays or she was going away on vacation. Um, can you recall how many times that happened? How many times you were on on vacation? And where were you going to at that time? I, I will truthfully tell you, we were going home two, three weeks, one month, and then going back most often. So when, but my wife, like she had a period of three, eight, three, three years and eight months that she came and she didn't have a documentation because uh, it's not like uh, the the Pope is relative with me. Dad tried to just answer the question. I am explaining. Three years and eight months, my wife could not come home because there was no law to make us official. And slowly we uh, got that and uh, we started to come home. And, and when and, she was coming home, someone was replacing her, yes. Okay. And was that done then after the, that period of three years and eight months? Was that done on a yearly basis that you were coming home or more than once a year? I was coming once a year. For instance, last year, when uh, my was pregnant, I could not come. My wife came, I could not. It's not that I uh, did not want. I was sick, I had some stomach issues, and I'm grateful to Italian doctors, they treated me. My father, father please ask. Usually you were coming once a year. Yes, usually. Usually, yes. Otherwise, you couldn't do because you had to work. You can't get uh, several vacations. The vacation is one month. Please answer the question. When the mother was coming home, was the mother replaced? Yes, she was, of course. Okay. So you both came in principle once a year for one month back home. And after that, you went back to uh, to Bologna, to Italy, to work over there. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have no further questions from my side. Do any of our commission members have any questions for Mr. Kitaka? If that does so to be the case, then I would like to thank you very much for being with us this afternoon and being uh, very open in uh, providing answers to the questions that we had. We thank you so much for being here. And we now take a brief break in order for you to move out and for your wife to come in, and then we will continue our hearing. But uh, there again, thanks very much for being with us this afternoon. Good afternoon, Mrs. Kitaka. Can you hear me uh, loud and clearly? Da, da, I, would. Okay. I can okay. hear. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon and welcome to you, sure. Mrs. Kitaka. Um, as you are aware, you are participating in the online public hearing uh, organized by this uh, Independent Evaluation Commission um, in relation to the evaluation of Mrs. Kitaka, your son. Um, and he's a candidate for the Superior Council of Magistracy. You will see on the screen in front of you five members of the Commission, um, and those members are Victoria Henley, uh, Nadezhda Rykiewski, uh, Tatiana Radukanu, Nona Tsetsoria, and myself, Hemel von Hebel, the Chair of the Commission. Um, during the, this hearing, uh, as you notice, there will be interpretation between Romanian and English. Um, and I would like to appeal to you to, uh, in order to allow for accurate interpretation, to speak clearly and slowly. 
uh, the proceedings are being recorded and public parts will be made available online on our website. Uh, a brief history, uh, last year on 20 January 2023, the Commission uh, took a decision in relation to the evaluation of your son, Mrs. Uh, Jan Kertzaka, for the position of member in the Superior Council of Magistracy. Um, this decision was appealed to the Supreme Court of Justice, and on the 1st of August last year, the Supreme Court annulled our decision and ordered a re-evaluation. On 16 February of this year, um, the candidate informed the Commission that he wanted to participate in a public hearing, and he also requested the Commission to invite you and your husband to testify before the Commission and that's why we are here this afternoon. Um, when we have questions for you, we will take into account your privacy and where required and possible the privacy of your family members and close persons. Um, so we will leave out unnecessary details about ID numbers and bank account numbers, et cetera. Um, then, um, the Commission has already heard your son uh, prior to you and your husband being heard this afternoon. Um, and um, as the hearing of you and your husband has been at the request of your son, uh, we would like to invite your son to ask questions first uh, to you. Uh, once that is done, then the Commission may have additional questions for you. Um, as uh, I said before, Mr. Kitaka, the son, please uh, keep your questions short and to the point to your mother. And of course, also to you, Mrs. Kitaka, please answer your questions short and to the point as well. And of course, also answer the questions truthfully and completely, because your answers are of great importance to the Commission in the evaluation uh, uh, of, your, uh, of your son as candidate. Mr. Kitaka, please, you have the floor now. I will say, as I just said, regarding my father, I never thought that I would have to be ever in the situation to ask questions of my parents, something that is not making me feel morally comfortable. So, mother, can you tell us when did you go to Italy? In 2007, in May, on the 21st of May, we arrived in Italy. It was not easy. I know it is hard, but please try to answer the uh, questions only. What about the father? He arrived in Italy in 2009 on the 6th of February. If the Commission has any no, with regards to the suspicions of the Commission or regarding the years 2012-2015, did my father work in Italy from 2012-2015? Yes, he worked. And was his work official or unofficial? He was working unofficially. And over this period of time, why were you sending money from, why were only you in your name sending the money? I was sending the money because I was the one working officially and I was able to go to the bank and actually send the money, make the transfers. And your father was not in the position to, to, to be able to send the money from the bank. Why were you sending the money to me only. The only person from our family who was in Moldova was you. When I opened the account, when did you start sending money? If you remember, more or less, around, or approximately, if you can't remember precisely. Until around 2009. In 2009, I started working officially in April, and that's when I started sending money to you, money that I and your father worked for. And in this period of time, 2012, 2015, what was the unofficial income of my father a month? Well, he had a good income. He worked in a number of places at the same time, but approximately how much? Well, sometimes he'd have 1,200, and then other times uh, 103,000 a month. So 1,000 to 1,200 on average? Yes, more or less like that. And there were months he would earn more than I did. And when you were coming home, who was, who would remain, who would replace you at your workplace when you were coming to Moldova? There was 
a workplace where I was replaced by Buniescu Valentina and my sister in, on one occasion in one of the years. And then another one, Sonia from Gaurin, replaced me. So a neighbor from the village, yes, and she was married and she would ask around who could replace me because the woman I was taking for was in a very bad condition. How often would you travel home? I haven't been home for three years and eight months. So the first time in Italy, I returned home for the first time after three years and eight months. And we've never stayed for longer than a month at home, maybe three weeks. But in one year, I think we spent about four weeks in Moldova, but we would then go back to work and we were happy about the work we had we were being paid for it and you know how hard it was to work in the country in Moldova and how hard it was for you too and we saw that we were actually getting being paid in Italy we had to uh, to to work and it was not easy at all morally speaking it was not an easy job to do um, I know that you might feel a little bit nervous but please try to stay focused on the questions that deposit of my father and uh, how did the money get to that account? You know that there's my account and there's another account of my father. So we were sending money, we took it over and we were thinking that we would go home and we were we would we would have to carry some amount of money with us we were able to carry out uh, to carry some money with us money with us did he, did he deposit it several times or once i remember that when he went home he took some money over he took 5000 euros if i'm not mistaken and as far as i can remember a little bit more he turned that into dollars he transferred that into dollars about 6000 dollars so euros were converted into dollars and then the second time we both took money home and then I can't remember exactly how much he converted. Maybe there was about 12,000. Now I can't be very precise. I mean, these are things that have happened years ago. And then a third, there was another third time. I think it was in total three times that he took money home. What was the purpose of the money? Well, every parent... Well, well, it was very hard for me to get adjusted to how things worked in Italy. I mean, it was a different culture. And then one of those days I realized, well, imagine that I woke up to a new culture, to a new reality, to new people. I used to have my own mindset, the way of seeing things, the way we were, we grew in Moldova. Then I went to Italy and I saw how people were working. They were working not just to have something to, 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 to cover their day, day experiences. So, mom, Mom, please stay focused. Why did my father take the money and put it there? Well, we thought we should keep those the, that amount of money away for a rainy day. Or what if we just uh, passed away? What would our children do? So both of us, we talked about it and we agreed to make a deposit of funds in the country. And this money that you and the father were sending, who the money belonged to, who was that the money of? It was our money. You know that I always kept records of the money. You needed to buy uh, textbooks. You bought a lot of them. You needed for education. I was paying for that. And you were held to strict account as to what you did with the money, how much you spent. You know very well that we had a very thorough communication about that. But then, when well, the last amount that I withdrew, what was the purpose of that last um, amount that was withdrawn? What was that for? Well, we were thinking of buying a better apartment in the Posta Veke sector. Um, uh, the Posta Veke apartment was very small. It was very tiny. We didn't have enough room for all of us. So given that we had the strength to work, we... Um, saved some money to enjoy better living conditions, to improve our living conditions. So having seen that over there, the parents, the grandparents are trying to do their best for the newer generations. But in uh, Moldova, things were different, sort of parents were waiting for children to grow up so that the children could grow, could take care of, of them, of the parents. But in Italy, things are different. First, they think of being able to provide for their child, to give something to their child. In Moldova, it's different. It feels like it was different. So at the end of the day, what did you do with the money? 
Well, the money was used to buy an apartment, the one that is in the central district. Who does that apartment? Who who's, is that apartment? Who does it belong to? Well, it, it's mine and your father's, but only I came home at that time. It was June. We came to, to Moldova for the christening of the boy. But in June, I was back to uh, buy the apartment. I was thinking that it's quite a big amount of money. And I remember I remember you told me not to, to send money anymore. And then I said, how can I not? I mean, how can I keep it here? I feel like I have to send it back home. Thank you. Well, I think I've run out of questions, and if I think uh, of any other question, oh, actually, I did think of a question. So, can you explain if you had the possibility to work in a different place but the official workplace? I was working officially 54 hours a week. 54 hours a week. And every day I would have three hours of my own, three hours off. But on Sundays and Saturdays, on um, Saturdays from noon till evening, I was I had time off and the entire Sunday was a day off for me. But I wasn't able to go anywhere. I mean, where would I have gone? So, of course, well, you see, I told them that I would, I would told the family, the employers, that I would be able to work on Sundays and Saturdays because I had nowhere to go. There was a little bit of fear of leaving. But the three days, three hours off that we have a day, that would be enough. So at the end of the month, I would, I would receive another 450 additionally. But we've worked for every every euro for everything. I mean, we earned every euro that we worked for. And you know how hard it was to leave home. And thank you, but just please stick to the questions. Well, no more questions from me. Maybe just something might come up to follow up on. But otherwise, uh, over to you, esteemed members of the commission, to ask questions. Over. Yes, thank you very much. And um, we have, uh, although indeed, of course, uh, the hearing of you and, and your husband this afternoon was at the request of your son, not at the request of the commission. Uh, we still have a few questions for you as well, on top of the questions that you answered to your son. Um, the, my first question is the following. So um, last month, um, your son submitted four uh, declarations to the commission. One was signed by you and your husband, and there were three other declarations as well. Um, two came from other citizens of Moldova, and one came from a citizen of Italy. Um, and all persons declared about the work that you and your uh, husband were doing um, during the different years. Um, my question to you is, can you tell us how you know each of these three persons? Um, what is your relationship to them and how long have you known them already? So please go ahead. Um. When we would have some time off, we would meet there in a park and people were missing home, uh, your native language, and there were several Badante caregivers there getting together in the park and we were talking to one another. And thus we got to know other people from Romania, from Moldova, and mostly I, I was really willing to talk in, in my native language. Language. I felt I wasn't having enough of it. When I was in Moldova, I was working in the school for six hours a day, and I was I, I even felt like in Italy my vocal cords were not working anymore because I was talking that little. The old lady I was taking care of wouldn't understand anything, so she was not feeling well at all. So, mm -hmm. so I... Uh, had to to even that's that's part of the reason why I had to work for even more hours with her because you wouldn't be able to to leave her to uh, alone so to speak sometimes she wouldn't even be able to be alone for for the three hours and my husband or somebody else would come over to have a look at whether she was okay and the, they uh, they agreed with my husband coming over as well you see in their household you can't just do whatever you think whatever you want but we were very grateful to the Italian 
Italian employers. They, it's thanks to them that we managed to change our material financial situation. And even with this preventing situation, they gave us information and they went to the notary and they were able to, to talk about it. They are also afraid of being called to account as per the law. But I mean, you can't do something harmful to them as in they open their doors to you and you just go to denounce them. It doesn't seem to be humane and proper. It's, you have to follow the call of your heart as well. And to, well, one should avoid to do evil and to do harm. When we make a mistake, we make a mistake. And when we don't, we don't. And we just have to admit to that in front of, of, of God of, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, th thank you. Can you tell us when did you, of those three people uh, that we were talking about now, those three people who submitted their declarations as well last month, when did you last talk to each of them? When was that? Well, we've, well, we always keep in touch. I'm always in touch with them. Now, I can't remember when exactly because now I work a lot. When I used to work with old lady, for the old lady that I was taking care of, I used to have a little bit more spare time. But now I have a lot of work, and uh, and uh, I do stay in touch. And on uh, uh, holidays, on the eighth of March, we congratulate one another on that occasion, or we congratulate one another on the occasion of a birthday, for instance. But the person that is from the the the, the neighbor from the village, Elena Lupu, we are constantly in touch. We keep and then another one of the persons, Valentina, is in Moldova. So, uh, so I mean, we know one another in the way of, uh, I, people who've been to Italy, they know what it's like. We know what it's like to, to work there. And we would all get together and we would tell our story. Look, look who I left home. Look what I left home. Look what is my relationship with my family. This is how I'm getting along with my husband, with my children. With There were women who would cry because they were sending the money back to their children. And the children were not spending their money properly. But when three years and eight months after I left, when I returned to Moldova, he was, when I left, he was in the police academy, first, first course. But when I returned, I saw that he was doing his best to study. I felt very happy. We tried to do our best to bring our children up properly. Okay. Yeah. And I felt a lot of satisfaction seeing how he was living up to those expectations. And that gave me more strength to work more because I could see that I was working for something. Because there are some, certain instances where one works and work, but there's no result. And then that is disheartening and you can't keep working. But I permanently felt encouraged to work, so to speak. And I would like to say, to thank my my son for that because i could see the good effect of the work that i was doing okay yeah th thank you and and um th those those three statements they are quite specific about the number of hours that you work the number of hours that your husband worked uh, the amount of income of you and and your um and your husband how did they get to know about these kind of details was it also something that you discussed with them in in regular to, meetings to a color Yes, I mean, people were talking about it, about things like this. Initially, we were just uh, getting getting to, to know one another, sort of becoming friends. And then we would ask one another, uh, how much are you being paid a month? And how much are you being paid a month? Do you have anything left to send back home? So mostly that, that's what we would um, bond over and talk about. Initially, I was going to the park to talk about anything, about history or whatever else. But all the women wanted to talk about is matters like this. Mom, the, the question was, those, those those women, who do they know about it? How do they know about this, about that information that they declared? Well, one of them lives in the village with me, and she knows very well about information like this. And the one who replaced me knows very well how much I was earning because she was earning what I was earning when I was away. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
It, one one thing that that uh, we noticed in the the three statements is that all three statements go into quite some detail about the number of hours of work, the salary, etc. But none of them actually describe the period over which those uh, informal uh, salaries you were having or your husband were having. What what are the time frame that we're talking about, and why is that not included in that statement if all those details are included? Well, but with the 2010, 2014-2015, since 2014 onwards, things got a little bit easier for my husband because he started working um, legally and that was a reason for a big joy for us. I mean, we were all right about it anyway. I mean, we were not thinking about the fact that we'll ever have to... Um, to reports, so to speak, in front of the of the government about what we did. But then you see there were people, for instance, that person from the village, a neighbor from the village, I mean, I and her traveled together to Italy, and she would always complain and cry, and she's been, she's cried her eyes out, and I wish no one to cry as much as we had to. Mom? Okay, my um, my last question to you is is the, is the following: that in in one of the declarations, um, there is a statement about the fact that whenever you were coming, or when you were going on vacations, and I understand that is when you were coming home to Moldova, this person would replace you. Um, the question was, when was the first time that you came back, and how many times did you, on an average, come back home to? Well, the first time, so I traveled to Italy in 2007, and I returned to Moldova on the 17th of December 2010. Mm -hmm. So for I haven't been in Moldova, back to Moldova for three years and eight months after I first left. What about after that? How often would you come? Well, there were years when I would not come home at all. I was thinking that it's best to continue working instead of going on vacation. But the law, no, I mean, the question was how many, what, once, a, once a year, once a year, it's only in 2015 when the apartment was bought. It was only in 2015 that I came for a couple of more days. Like now, I came for four days, so I found someone to replace me at my workplace, so I had to leave my workplace and to come to Moldova for four days. And on Friday, I'm leaving back to Italy. And the same happened for when we bought the apartment, when we bought the apartment, because we collected that amount and we thought we should do something useful with that amount and uh, what was related to my husband we thought we should keep that money away like that just in case you never know I mean given our age you can't just we wouldn't want our children to have to take any loans to I mean we wouldn't it's enough for them that they're so to speak losing their parents if we were to pass away we didn't want them to feel to have to take loans to bury us and uh that was the the only purpose of my trips and works and work that i did and i would like to say that a lot of Work has been even done at home by my children and everybody in the neighborhood knows. But I would only come to Moldova home for about two or three weeks. And then I'll be go I'll go back because I was feeling happy with the work. Because when you work and you're being paid for that, rewarded for that, paid for the work that you do, that gives you satisfaction. And I think most of the people from Moldova who, go, who went to Italy have worked like that. I mean, it might be also different from a person to another. It depends on the family that you ended up working in. But thank God. God, I think I was lucky. It's just I've never thought about details like this. I've never thought about the fact that a situation like the now, like the one we're in now, would ever emerge. But I would bring a hundred people, a hundred people who would tell you that I've been working on Sundays and Saturdays or about the three hours, and it's not only me and my husband. Everybody knows. Everybody knows in Bologna in that area. Okay. All right, thank you. I think this is the last question that I have. I'm just looking whether any of my colleagues have any questions. Uh, 
which does not seem to be the case, then uh, this means that we come to the end of the hearing of you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Kitoka, for being with us this afternoon um, uh, and to answer the questions that your son had for you and, and the few questions that also the commission had for you. Um, there again, thank you so much. We now come to, we will briefly inter interrupt so that you can leave the place where you are in now and then we go back uh, to your son for closing the hearing. Thanks again for being with us this afternoon and we appreciate your willingness to talk to us um, and answer our questions. Thank you. I think then this will bring us um, almost to the end of uh, our hearing this afternoon. Um, now, this is the moment, uh, Mr. Kitaka, for you to make a brief closing statement at the end of the hearing, and then we will wrap up. So, Mr. Kitaka, please go ahead. You have the opportunity to now um, make a brief closing statement. I will start by thanking my parents for coming, giving statements, and most importantly, that ever since they left, they took care to ensure that I get appropriate education. So I thank them from the bottom of my heart, and I'm sorry for this inconvenience that I created for them, including by my intention to become an SEM member. My father, for instance, even has health issues because of this. So I'd like to take the to trust the commission members to take into account during the recent devaluation that my parents just had no one else in the country to send the money to. Uh, I'd like to ask you to analyze thoroughly the bank statements that proves that money certainly came from Italy. To make requests even to Italian authorities to ask about it or ask to the citizens that provided statements about it. Because this was something well known for Italy, especially that the men were not working legally. They couldn't get an official employment. What I said and what I uh, kept stating during the hearing that my father had, a, had an income comparable to my mother is, is proved after 2020. 2014-2015, when he got an official uh, employment, for instance, uh, in 2015 he had a, a 14,000 euro salary. Um, also, I would like to thank the ones who took care uh, and wrote the letter from the SEM and the briefing note from uh, the intelligence service and NAC, because they... Um, made a great effort to denigrate my image and to give a privating commission a false perception of my personality. Also, I will do everything legally possible for this to be proved in court despite the fact that today, based on the answer I got from the commission in the morning, I cannot uh, benefit of a polygraph uh, test. Last but not least, I would like to ask, I'd like to draw the commission's attention to accept the fact that indeed in 2014-2014, I did not have the knowledge and accept that I did not behave as an owner of the financial resources that my parents sent from abroad. Even when I I was analyzing this, when I when I realized that in 2015, before I became a judge, I when I understood that I started to declare, also I'd like to draw the attention of the commission members that not even for one moment I wanted or I did the mislead the commission about bank accounts because the bank account in the third round of questions in the third round of questions it was about the current account i realized the mistake only this year in february last but not least i would like to ask the commission to apply the same treatment it applied to other 
candidates who passed nu poți, nu the evaluation. I uh, cannot uh, ignore the great effort made by the secretariat because I counted. Like we, we made requests to like 50 authorities, institutions about me. But I uh, also couldn't ignore Iulian uh, Mun. Montano, former member of the SCM, request to the S, to the NAC, but I understand these risks, but I anticipated the risks related to some state authorities, and I really believed in privating. I don't know if I'm going to work as a judge anymore, regardless of the result of this process, but what matters for me is what my parents said, because Around one million of, our, of Moldovan citizens are uh, in the same situation. I did not get crowned with the judges' ropes, and I, it wasn't my intention to necessarily become a member of ASEM, but I would like the Commission to take note or take a, uh, of the uh, of behavior of Mr. Mustatsa, who for more than one year has hidden the information related to the annex to the request to provide the preferential price apartment, because I just forgot. And this year, in the autumn, at the request of the Secretariat of Privating Commission, the current interim uh, president of ESCM provided the full information. So please, I kindly ask you to ask yourselves what was the purpose of a previous interim president of SCM to hide this information from the Privating Commission? Information that has uh, been so important who, in the context of me failing on the ethic, on ethical integrity. Actually, before the uh, Supreme Court, I did not even know that the regulation has been amended in uh, December 2017. So I uh, showed good faith with the apartment and in declarations, in everything I reported to the, in these seven or eight rounds of questions that I had with the Commission. For this reason, at least today, I feel thankful, meaning that, well, the ones who can understand will understand that my parents were told that that was a natural thing, thing for Moldova. And then, when it comes to the letters or requests from those state authorities, there is a legal procedure to defend my personal professional reputation of my family. There is a legal procedure I will uh, made the I will make the uh, necessary requests or inquiries. That's it. Okay. This is a new exercise for Moldova. I was probably one of the biggest supporters of this law. I really believe that privating will um, aim, uh, well, will not aim to bring parents from Italy to confirm that they worked informally over there. I don't have yachts, I don't have hidden millions. My family is a regular one. Like most families from Moldova who had to emigrate. They left parents had to leave because the Republic of Moldova as a state did not ensure its constitutional obligation to ensure decent living. Moldovans sent money, including by uh, bags that they sent from abroad. My mother did it legally through the bank uh, so that we could have proof later on about where the money came from because the account was open in 2008, so it, it's the same account. Um, this proves what I'm saying. And the state, when citizens started to send money home, did not think, did not care how to create a legal framework for them to bring money home. And now, the diaspora is in the situation of, um, I mean, it's not easy for a person to come and say what they worked, uh, what they did as a job in Italy, because it wasn't a pleasant job for my parents, and uh, I'm grateful for them, to them for this, but that's the similar situation for hundreds of people. Uh, that's it for me. If you have any additional questions, uh, I'm here, and please take into account all the aforementioned. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Um, with that, uh, we come to the end of the hearing. Uh, I thank the candidate uh, for your submissions and answers to the questions, um, and also for the fact that uh, your parents, uh, at your request, was here this afternoon and answered questions uh, from your side and from our side. Um, the Commission, as you know, will now withdraw for deliberations, and as much as possible, we will strive at delivering a decision within a month after the date of this hearing. I hereby declare this hearing closed. Thank everyone for being here this afternoon. Thank you.